If y'all don't mind, just stand up on your feet and let's just lift our hands to God. Amen. Don't worry about who's next to you, but focus on Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's the only one that can bring you out of your situation. He's the only one that can deliver you. He's the only one that can truly save you. He's the only one that can give you that found and healing that you've been looking for. Oh, Jesus, 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 something happened.
Come on, give God praise right where you are. Come on, you can do a little bit better than that. Come on, pour it out to him. Come on, bless the name of the Lord tonight. Come on, do we have any worshipers in the house tonight? Do we have any worshipers in the house tonight? Come on, give God praise. Come on, worship him. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. God, we love you. Look at somebody and tell them I'm glad to see you on tonight. Come on, find somebody else. Tell them I'm glad to see you on tonight. Tell them this is the night that you leave change. Hallelujah. Come on, give our music minister a hand, clap of praise. Ushering us into the presence of the Lord. Amen. We thank God for the angels of this house. Apostle and Bishop Stanfield, come on, make noise for them. We thank you for, for excellent hospitality. Amen. I felt the presence of the Lord as soon as we turned on 20th Street. <laughs> so before we even hit the parking lot, so somebody been fasting. And so we, we thank God for the presence of God in this place, the glory of God, all the prayers that have gone out. And we know that God is going to do something on tonight because he's already doing something and so we, we thank God give the musicians a hand clap of praise anointed minstrels of God amen I definitely want to thank God for a portion of Raymond Word who came out on tonight give God praise for them I want to thank God for my lovely wife Man, being being by my side. I want to thank God for Pastor Smith being in the house. Raise your hand. Amen. And to all the other pastors that are here, we, we greet you in, into our name, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I brought with me some of my books uh, on tonight. One is entitled, What Do I Do When the Enemy Is Me? Not the pastor, not the bishop, not my husband, not my wife. Not mom or dad, not my supervisor. But what happens when I discover that at the end of the day, oops, it was me. I'm the reason why I can't keep a man or a woman. I'm the reason why I blew my taxes in one day. I'm the reason why I can't keep a job. I done blamed everybody else. But what happens? When you discover that the biggest enemy wasn't them, but it was you. It's a lot easier to look out of a window than it is to look in the mirror. So what do I do when I discover at the end of the day, I'm blaming everybody else, but the enemy is me. We've been trained and equipped to fight exterior forces. But what happens when the biggest enemy is an interior force? I have part one and part two um, for that. The next book is entitled, When I Met Me. When I Met Me. We brag about meeting everybody else, but have you ever got your own autograph? 
there's a difference between net worth and self-worth. Net worth is how other people view you. But self-worth is how you view yourself. I tell people all the time, what you took from me didn't take from me. Because I knew who I was before you showed up. I was already called and anointed before you showed up. So what you took from me did not take from me. Because God showed me my intrinsic value. The value that he gave me from the beginning, before you was formed in your mother's womb, I already knew you. Um, the last book is entitled, I'm Empowered to Prosper. Can you shout that out? I'm Empowered to Prosper. It gives principles on prosperity, how we can prosper. Um, one ch chapter is entitled, When Your Character and Your Career Doesn't Match. You'd be amazed at how many people want to own a daycare and don't like kids. You're a good, a good person. Maybe you need to work in an office somewhere by yourself. But if your character doesn't match your career, you'll never prosper. Amen. Give God praise for them. We'll have those in the back. Amen. After serve, they're only $15 a piece. Tell your neighbor, only $15. Amen. Let us pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight. And we thank you right now, Father God, for how you have already moved. We thank you right now that you press the gas and continue to move. We pray, Father God, for healing, deliverance on tonight. Let your spirit move down every aisle. Touch every soul that's breathing, Father. And those that refuse to be touched, you touch them anyway. And show them that you are God. Let me sit in you so you can stand in me. Close my mouth and open yours. You are the potter and I'm nothing but clay. Make it mold me to what you have called me to be. Speak, Lord, tonight for your servants are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give him another hand. Clap of praise. If you would, just stand for the reading of the word. We're going to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Can you pass my towel inside of my bag later, Marjorie? My black towel. Acts chapter 5. Verses 17 through... 23 were brought to you by the Holy Ghost. Acts 5 verse 17 and we have it said amen. amen. Then the high priest rose up and all those who were with him which is the sect of the Sadducees the Sadducees they're sad you see and when they were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in a common prison. But at night, if you check your watch, I think it's night. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, go, stand in the temple stand in church and speak to all the people the words of life this life and when they had heard that they entered to abundance <laughs> early that morning and taught but the high priest and those with him came and called the council together with all the elders of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought out. But when the officers came and did not find them in the prison, they returned and reported. Verse 23, saying, Indeed, we found the prison shut securely 
and the guards standing outside before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. You may be seated. I want to preach tonight as a spiritual guide us from with this thought we have in our mind. I'm getting out of this. I'm, I'm getting out of this. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I'm getting out of this. There was a wrong neighbor. Find you a good neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I'm getting out of this. If you believe that, come on, give God praise tonight. Now, if you're not in anything, I'm not talking to you. But the devil been riding your back and been attacking you. This is the night that God is going to get you out of wherever you are in. Can you give God praise in advance that I'm about to get out of this? Remind this story about this scientist. He placed five flies inside of a clear container. Did a spirit experiment. He placed five flies inside of a clear container. He put a lid on it. And every time those flies would try to escape, they bumped their head. Every time they tried to get delivered, they bumped their head. Every time they tried to improve themselves, they would bump their head. Every time they try to buy a house, they will bump their head. Every time they try to go further in life, they will bump their head. This happened for six weeks. And the scientists removed the lid. And the flies were so depressed that they only flew two inches from the ground. The lid was lifted. But out of fear of bumping their head again, they refused to fly any further. The lid was lifted, but in their mind, it was still on the top. The scientists discovered, watch this, that it wasn't until a new fly flew into the container the rest of them flew back out because a new fly was assigned to them that the lid was lifted I'm here tonight as the new fly to let you know the lid that's been holding your health down has been lifted the lid that's been holding your finances down has been lifted. The lid that's been holding your family down has been lifted. You need to give God praise because you just exit off of a fast. And God said tonight, every demonic force that's been over your life has been lifted. Everything that had your child by the neck has been lifted. Everything that had your husband at the house has been lifted. Everything that kept you in debt has been lifted and if you know it's been lifted give God praise like you know the curse on your life has been broken every demonic force every diabolical force every setback in your life has been lifted and whom the sun set free is free indeed I need ten of you to give God praise like you already know the lead has been on my life for the last five years has been lifted. Can you shout, I'm getting out of this because the lid has been lifted. All I needed was one fly to come into my life. All I needed was one word to come into my life. All I need was one prophetic voice to come into my life to let me know the lid has been lifted. Can you shout on getting out of this? Here in Acts chapter 5, 
Peter, and the rest of the disciples. They were on great expeditions in growing the church. The church experienced radical growth. People were being saved, delivered, and set free. They were being healed. And as a result, the high priest was enraged. He's mad and upset because the gospel is being spread. And he began to attack them because they were growing. Maybe you missed it. The attack on their lives was solely because they were growing. If they weren't growing, they wouldn't have been attacked. But the simple fact that they made up in their mind, I'm going to do better. That's when they begin to get attacked. See, now you wondering why it is the enemy been attacking you from the north, the south, the east, and the west. It's only because you are growing. The last season of your life, you weren't a threat to the enemy. But it's something about this season. You're making him mad. You're making him upset. He, he's mad at your growth. And he said, if she shout one more time, if, if, she, if he come to church one more time, if he saved somebody else's life, um, the, the kingdom of darkness is going to be in trouble. So I got to stop her. I have to stop him because they are growing. I'm going to let somebody know the attack that's on your life is not because of sin. That the attack that's on your life now is because you made up in your mind, for God I live and for God I die. But I'm going to let somebody know the devil should have got you last year. He should have got you doing COVID. You have an extra ounce of anointing on your life. And for every attack that's on your life, every trap that's on your life, God is going to bring you through. The high priest is mad. He's mad. And in verse 18, the Bible says he, they laid hands on them. Don't read it too fast. It wasn't praying hands. It wasn't praying hands. This means that they begin to beat them. Now, now um, the beating that they went through in Acts 5 was totally different because this beating it really hurt. Why it hurt, Apostle? Because in Acts 4, they just went through a beating. In Acts 4, they were beaten real bad and thrown into custody. And before the swelling went down, before they can remove the bandages, before they were healed, before they can settle back in, and in Acts chapter 5, they was beaten again in the same place. What happens when you keep getting hit in the same place? If it was something different, I can understand it. But, but what happens when the devil keep hitting me in the same place? What happens when I keep getting struck in the same place? It's only because now the devil has discovered the main thing that will make you cry. Uh, he, he finally discovered the main thing that will make you miss church. He finally discovered the main thing that will make you depressed. He finally discovered the main thing that will put you in a cave. And now he found that area in your life. He's attacking that area Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You leave church, he hitting that same area. You come to the altar, you go back home, he's hitting that same area. Oh, but look at you tonight. You've been hit in the same area, but you get 
giving God the same praise. You've been hit in the same area, but you haven't stopped praying. You haven't stopped coming to church. You haven't stopped worshiping God. And you want to make the devil mad. I dare you to give God praise tonight. To let every witch, every warlock know. You found my button, yeah. You make me mad, that's right. But I will refuse to stop giving God all the glory, all the honor, and all of the praises. They hit him in the same area. Your neighbor don't understand because they're getting hit in different areas. But the problem with you is why I keep dating the same type of men. Keep going through the same cycle. I get out and I go right back in the same thing. They got hit in the same area. And now they're drug into prison. They're in prison. In Acts 4, they was only in custody. Custody was a temporary place. Prison is a permanent place. They got out of custody. But in biblical times, if you ever go to prison, it's a life sentence. They're now in prison. Confined. Isolated. Now the church can't grow because you're in a mental prison. You can't even witness anymore. Because you're in a spiritual prison. You can't even lift your hands to give God praise. Because you're in prison. That's why you didn't fast. Because you were in prison. The last season you was only in custody. Now the devil then took you a little deeper. And put you in prison. Peter and the apostles. They were in prison. But Peter said, I'm getting out of this. I don't know how. I don't know when. But I'm getting out of this. Can you tell your neighbor, neighbor, you're getting out of this? I don't care how long you've been in it. You're getting out of this. How do they get out? Verse 19, the Bible said that night. That night. An angel came in. We're getting ready to turn right now. Um, an angel comes in. And when an angel came in that night, notice what the angel did. The angel began to open up doors. The angel only had one assignment. And that assignment was to open doors. In order for you to get out, watch this, the angel had to come in and open up some doors. Please watch this. Um, an exit door and an entry door, it's the same door. An exit door and an entry door, it's the same door. The only difference is what side you are standing on. If I'm standing on the outside of that door and trying to come in, it will say enter. But if I turn around and get ready to leave, it will say exit. It's the same door, the same doorknob. But the only difference is what side I'm standing on. The angel comes in and opens the door. But the angel did not open an entry door. The angel opened an exit door. Because Peter wasn't on the outside of the door. Peter was on the inside behind the door. So when the angel opened up the door, the angel did not open up the door so Peter can walk into something. The angel opened up the door so Peter can walk out of something. 
and God said tonight in order for you to get out he said I'm opening up an exit door and when I open up the exit door you're gonna walk out of some stuff see the church we only brag about God opening the entry doors give me a house give me a job give me more money later on for that I don't want to get my new house and I'm still messed up on the inside God before you open an entry door can you open up exit doors I got some stuff in me that shouldn't be in me I got some spirits in me that shouldn't be in me but if you can ever open up an exit door and God say tonight those of you who dealing with cancer when I open up this exit door every cancerous cell has got to walk out of your life diabetes gotta walk out of your life high blood pressure gotta walk out of your life it strokes has to walk out of your life everything in you that shouldn't be in you God say tonight your number one miracle I'm opening up an exit door so anything in you that's not of me is getting ready to leave in the name of Jesus Jesus, thyroids and fibroids are getting ready to shrink in the name of Jesus. Every cancerous cell is getting ready to leave in the name of Jesus. Your next doctor visit, they won't find anything because God said as of tonight, I'm allowing it to exit out of your life. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. God is about to open an exit door. He's about to open an exit door. Exit stays right. Anything that's in my life that shouldn't be in my life, God take it out. Uproot it. Get it out of me. Anything that's in my life that shouldn't be in my life, take it out of me. Get your neighbor to a neighbor. He's giving you an exit door. He's giving you an exit door. The Bible says with every temptation, God makes a way for you to escape. With every temptation, God gives you an exit door. He gives you a way out. Some of you this weekend, you're going to find a way out. You're going to find a way out of every trap, every trip, everything the enemy has set before you. God is going to open up an exit door. So I'm going to open up the door. Maybe you missed it. I apologize. I'm wrong. God forgive me. See, I, I tell people you got you can't read it too fast. The angel did not open up a door. The angel opened up doors. God said tonight, I'm delivering you from more than just one thing. That's your testimony. I'm delivering you from more than just one thing. I'm opening up doors in your life. Some of you are going to be delivered from two things at the same time. So he's delivering you from two things at the same time. He's delivering you from debt and depression at the same time. He's going to deliver you from those pills and from those bills at the same time. Can you give God praise? God, open up doors in my life. He said, your blood pressure too high and your house payment too high. Let me open up the door and allow some stuff to exit out of your life. There's two doors. Some of you got three doors. Some of you have four doors. Some of you have multiple doors. But can you give God praise for everything he's delivering you from? Come on, the, the angel showed up at night. I said the angel showed up at night. Some of you don't even realize you're being healed right now. 
You came in sick, but you leaving in healed because tonight God is opening up that door to allow every sickness to leave you. When you go back home, your son going to look better because God opened up a door at your house that everything that's in him that's not like God has got to go. You've been praying that God will give you entry doors. So no, I got to open up an exit door because where I'm taking you, don't forget to take out the trash. There's some stuff in you I have to get out of you. The angel comes in, open the door, not for Peter to walk into something, but for Peter to walk out of something. It wasn't an entry door. It was an exit door. And Peter and the disciples, they walked out at night no one seen them because it was dark the community thought they were still in prison but god delivered them at night when no one knew they were delivered god healed them at night when no one knew they were healed god got them out at night when no one knew they were out and the high priest called a board meeting. So we're going to bring them out. So we want to kill them. He said, I need you to go and, uh, and bring them out of prison. Go bring them out. I'll get the keys to my truck. <laughs> go down there and, and get them out. You need gas money? I'll help you. If you got to make two trips, that's fine. But go and get them and bring them out. We get to verse 22 and the soldiers get to the prison. And they walk in there. Anybody by the name of Peter in here? Or Pete? A bro man? Anybody? Nobody by name Pete. The knife carrier? He cut your ear off that Pete. You know? The one who walked on water? You never, oh, he left. They left. Oh, they left. Man. They, they went looking for Peter and the apostles in prison watch this the prison was a place where they would constantly beat them the prison was a place where they felt marginalized this prison was a place where they were confined this prison was a place where they was beaten and beaten um, they were looking for them not just in prison they were looking for them in the place that caused them their greatest pain and you got some people looking for you and the reason why they can't find you because you are not in that place anymore. I used to be in this place of pain, but God got me out. I'm talking to some people in here. You was in a place of depression. You was in a place where you came to church and you felt numb. You, you really couldn't get into worship. You really couldn't get into praise. You was in a place you didn't care if you lived or if you died. You was in a place where you wanted to commit suicide. 
I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but you are in a place you don't want nobody praying over you. You don't want nobody quoting you in the scripture. You was in a bad place, but some kind of way God got you up out of that place. And when people see your praise, they tell you to sit down. It don't take all of that. But if you really understand this praise is God, I shouldn't be praising him. I, I shouldn't be worshiping him. I shouldn't be on a fast. I shouldn't be in church tonight. But God reached all the way down and he touched me. God didn't touch me that night in church. I was at home and he touched me. I was at the traffic light and God touched me and God wiped the tear from my eye and said, brother, get up. Live, live, live. Daughter, get up. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has been revealed in your life. And so now people come to you. They want to pat you on the back and tell you it's going to be okay. You got to check them. Listen, I thank you for your sympathy and your empathy. But guess what? I'm not there anymore. God delivered me. He came in and gave me life. Is there anybody in here? Aren't you glad people can't find you where you used to? You know you've been delivered when people can't find you where you used to be. I used to be high. I used to be a drunk. I used to be in the club. I used to be on the streets. I used to be depressed. But I'm so glad if you find me, you won't find me there. Because God came in my life and he turned my life completely around. Give your neighbor a high five. And tell your neighbor, I moved, I moved. I'm not in that place anymore, I moved. God packed my bags and I moved. I'm not in that. I'm looking for them in prison, but they're not there anymore. In Luke 24, in Luke 24, Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene and a few other women, they had a women's fellowship. And they said, well, now women's fellowship, we're going to get out of the church. We do something different. Let's go and anoint the body of Jesus. And all of them gathered together, got in the church van. They went up there all dressed in purple. They get to the tomb and find out that somebody had already, a deacon came by and moved the rock. And they were perplexed because somebody stole the body of Jesus. Two angels came dressed in white with Stacey Adams. <laughs> They, they said, oh, oh, he's not here. Three days ago, you put him here. He told you, I won't be here long. Don't miss this. He told you, I won't be here long. But you still came here. Because even though he told you he was getting out of this, you didn't believe it. You know how many church people don't believe you getting out. And they still expect you to be in the same place. The angel rebuked them by saying, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Why are you looking, looking for living stuff around dead stuff? I'm talking to somebody I used to be dead. Oh, but behind the tomb, God shook me and he woke me up. But now that I'm alive, I don't hang around dead friggins. Now that I'm alive, I don't give 
him a dead praise. Now that I'm alive, I don't give him a dead worship. You can't find me around dead people because I'm alive. So I thank God they didn't find me where I used to be. They're looking for him in the tomb. Couldn't find him. Looking for Peter and disciples in the prison. And they couldn't find them. They were gone. So I get out of here. Um, I'm taking my time driving back to the house. Um, they, they wondered, um, huh, they're, they're not here. So now I got to go and tell the high priest. Ain't enough. They're gone. How am I going to explain that all these disciples that we put in prison, in a mental prison, in a spiritual prison, some of you in a financial prison, how did they get out Friday night? Got to go tell him. In verse 23, get out of here. He tells the high priest, he said, uh, listen, they're not there anymore. But in verse 23, he said, when, I, I, when we got there, the prison was shut securely. When we got there, the prison was shut. It was locked. I had to get my key and open the door. And when I walked in, no one was in there. And I thought to myself, who left the door open? And I thought about it. No one left the door open. Because when I walked in here, the door was already closed. I began to shout based on the hospitality of that angel. I started shouting in the beginning when the angel opened up the door. Oh, but I shouted even more when the angel closed the door. He said, Apostle, I know you're getting out of here. He said, but in order for them to get out, he said, I, I got to close the door. You won't die the way your father died. I got to close the door. So every trap, every trip, everything they got out of you can get back in you because the door, the Holy Ghost, the door is closed. Mama, don't worry about cancer coming back. The door is closed. Don't worry about your son going back on the streets. The door is closed. Don't worry about setbacks because the door is closed. God opens up a door. Then he closes another door. So I give God praise tonight. That after he healed me, he closed the door. After he opened up this next door, he's going to close the door. Can you give God praise? Because every witch, every diabolical force, they can't even find you. And if they did find you, they can't come back in because the door has been Can you tell your neighbor, neighbor, God is closing doors. I say, God is closing doors. He's closing doors on your health. He's closing doors on your finances. He's closing doors on that relationship. He's closing doors in your family. Everything that try to kill you and drive you crazy and give you a setback, God said tonight, the door has been... I said tonight, the door has been... Tonight, the door has. Listen. 
If you ever watch a, a stage play, you ever watch a stage play in between the scenes, the director will close the curtains. While the curtains are being closed, they're rearranging stuff. While the, clothes, the, the, the curtains are being closed, they rearranging stuff. But when they open the curtains back up, it don't look like it used to look. God said every now and again, I have to close the curtains in your life to change some stuff in order to give you something better. You get mad because God closed the curtains. He said, I'm only doing it to give you a different scene. Because this scene, you were crying, you were depressed, you were lonely, and you were hurting. But God said, let me close the curtain. When I close the curtain, I'm healing your body. I'm touching your house. I'm touching your child. I'm touching your husband. I'm touching your wife. I'm touching your body. I'm touching your mind. People don't see it because the curtains has been closed. But God said, as of tonight, you getting out of this. The God is closing the curtain. He's touching your thyroids and your fibroids. He's touching your knees. He's touching arthritis. He's touching every cell. He's touching diabetes. He's touching your marriage. And God said, now, I'm about to open up the curtain. And when I open up the curtain, you will look better. When I open up the curtain, you will have better. When I open up the curtain, you will drive better. When I open up the curtain, you will live better. Can you give God praise on tonight that God is about to close a door? And then when he closes the door, he closes the curtain and open it back up just to give you better. Tonight, tonight, I'm doing tonight, listen. Listen, I feel the Holy Ghost, listen tonight. Listen. All of this happened at night. All this happened at night. I stand as an angel of God. Tonight I was sent to open up doors. I was sent to this house to open up doors. The doors that are being opened in your life now are exit doors. There are some doors being opened in this ministry. There are exit doors. Every church will go through this experience. But God had to take out of some stuff. It's been hindering us. Take out the cancer out of the church. It's been hindering growth. tells John in Revelation I stand before you an open door that no man can close tonight God has opened up doors in your life in your ministry in your finances I feel the spirit There's some stuff that's going to get out of you. There's some stuff you're going to walk out of. Whatever prison you've been in, tonight it ends. You're getting out of this tonight. And God said, the moment you get out, I'm not going to leave the door open. He said, I'm going to close it. He said, I'm closing it. 
Because you don't want to. We can be honest. There are some doors. We put a little hedge behind it. Leave a crack in it. Watch this. Just in case the marriage don't work. I, I got somebody. Okay. Just in case this doesn't work out. I'm going to leave a door open. To pay my rent. To pay bills. God said tonight. I'm closing it. Because the next time I pull these curtains back, you won't need that anymore. I'm telling you, next time I pull these curtains back, you, you won't need that anymore. Tonight, if you need God to open up a door in your life and close one, rush down to this altar. If you need God to, to open up doors in your life, open up doors. You didn't fast for nothing. I need these doors to be open. I'm not even talking about entry doors. I'm talking about exit doors. The people only knew the stuff you need to get out of. If they only knew the stuff you need to be delivered from. And some of you, truth be told, it's been that same wound. Keep hitting you in the same place. But tonight is the last night. Can you come a little closer and make room for the others? I'm, I'm, I'm opening up doors. So I'm opening up a door. 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 You ever try to get out of something? No matter how hard you try, you fall right back in it. You get out of it and you, you fall right back in it. You get out and you're right back in it. It's only because you've been opening your own door. But when God has set you free, you can't help but be free. Whom the Son set free is not just free but you're free indeed. There's a stamp behind it. You're free because God closed the door. Tonight, I'm speaking. First of all, that, that's a wave of people at this altar with sickness in your body. And tonight, Paul, you don't even believe in healing because so many people in your family died from the same thing after you prayed. So Paul, you still doubting. Not believing 100%. But that's why I love Acts 5. Because Peter didn't pray to get out. God just got him out. There's nowhere Peter asked to get out. God got him out. Tonight, God's going to heal you whether you ask for it or not. He had to get Peter out because that was an assignment on his life. You cannot die because that is a greater assignment on your life in the name of Jesus. God's going to get you out not tomorrow. He's going to get you out tonight. If we believe it, can you lift your hands tonight? God, give me our healing. Healing in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. God, right now, right now, Father, we pull on the anointing from heaven. And we pray.
pray for healing right now in the name of Jesus. God, we speak healing tonight, Father. Let them know their fasting weren't in vain. In the name of Jesus, let them know their coming tonight wasn't in vain, Father. Can you do what medication can do? Can you do what prescription drugs can do? In the name of Jesus, I know what the doctor said they can do, Father, but you are a present help in the time of trouble. So right now, Father, can you open up an exit door in the life, Father? Send it out in the name of Jesus. Send it out right now. The door is open right now. Can you tell it get out? Whatever affliction you are dealing with, can you say it by name and tell it to get out in the name of Jesus? Cancer, get out. Diabetes, get out. Hypertension, get out in the name of Jesus. Every erratic cell, get out in the name of Jesus. Every tumor, get out in the name of Jesus. I speak to prostate cancer, get out right now. Colon cancer, get out right now. Get out, get out. You gotta say it by faith, get out, get out, get out. Come on, say it with some authority, get out. Say it like they own private property, get out, get out, get out. Devil, you are trespassing, get out. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Get out, get out, get out. Come on, touch yourself. Say, get out, get out, get out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, right now, every evil spirit, every proclivity, every addiction, the thing you keep tripping over. I said, God, help me to hate the sin that I love. For five seconds, think about that one thing. Those two things. Those three things. That's displeasing God. That you keep running back to. And say, get out. Come on, tell it, get out, get out, get out. Get out, get out, get out. Get out, get out. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I'm praying that tomorrow people won't find me where I used to be. <laughs> Come on, I say tomorrow people, they're looking for me. They won't find me where I used to be. My next appointment, my doctor won't find what he found before in the name of Jesus. He won't see what he's seen before in the name of Jesus. I speak tonight in the name of Jesus that God would take it out. Now, Father, my prayer close the door close the door close the door close the door I speak tonight that every door has been hindering you is now closed every door that will cause you failure Every door that will cause you setbacks. Every door that will hurt you and your family. God close it right now. I pray right now that when you try to mess up, you can't. That God will close the door. When you make the phone call, they won't even.